What's up guys, Max Maxworks here, and today we're gonna to be building a four x eight rolling workbench for the garage. Uh, so recently my main welding table got stolen out of my driveway, which really sucked. And uh, going here into 2018, I'm gonna be doing a lot of house renovation projects, which means that I'm gonna be doing a lot of things I normally don't do, a lot of painting, a lot of like molding and trim work and, and other things that, that aren't really in my kind of uh, normal repertoire, especially for videos. And so basically I need a large open flat surface uh, to be able to you know, lay stuff out on and paint and whatnot. And I need to have a firm mount for my table saw and my chop saw and do a little bit more woodworking stuff than I normally would do. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna build a four x eight um, plywood, two x four and four x four um, workbench that I can roll in and out of the garage. Um, and we're gonna integrate the table saw into it for sure. Um, the chop saw, I think I'm gonna build mounts to allow it to lift up off the table so that it's not part of it. So that as much open flat area as possible. Um, and basically today I'm just gonna be assembling it together now this is uh, an easy project everybody can do in their garage with some basic tools and I'll put Amazon affiliate links uh, for the stuff that I use down below in the description. Um, but basically it's just screwing pieces of wood together, um, pretty basic measuring and cutting and stuff. Uh, so the only thing that's special is these. I got these off of Amazon, these are two way locking um, casters. And what that means is that when you lock them, not only does the wheel not roll, but this also does not rotate. Um, I think I paid like 25 bucks for these. They're gonna be down in the description below as well. And this whole project, including the wood and the plywood, you know, depending on how fancy you wanna get with it, cost me around $100 here in Texas uh, for wood and casters and screws and stuff. Um, but could be, I, I would say anywhere from about $80 to about $150 would be kind of the price range uh, depending on what kind of extra features you're going to add to it as well. <clears throat> so we actually have a few trick things that I'm going to add to, to this one um, and that's all kind of, you know, including the extra parts I bought, I probably spent around $120 realistically. So enough talking, let's just fucking get to it. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to lay out basically a four foot by eight foot square. So we got two eight foot two by fours and we're going to make basically four foot long end caps. So we're going to take another two by four, cut it in half and that'll give us our kind of rough square. So there we go. We got our frame screwed together. It's basically four feet wide, eight feet long. And one of the nice things is that you want to do is if you have a second 12 volt tool and I'm not chilling for DeWalt or Ryobi, but you want to use a thin drill and you want to pre-drill all of your holes, especially when you're using long three inch screws. That way it avoids uh, the wood splitting and you get a nice good grip and everything. Now we're going to add these two cross braces and the magic numbers you're looking for are 32 and 64. Basically if you just measure it, that's 96 inches divided by three, 32 inches, 32, 64. Now a quick note on ergonomics. Um, our casters give us six inches of total height. That's how tall they are from the top of the mounting surface to the bottom of the wheel. Now generally for an adult male, and this is gonna vary because everyone's a little different, but you want your desk to come to these knuckles right here. So if you guys look for instance, this is exactly 36 inches. I'm exactly six foot tall. So to me, this is the proper surface where I can stand and work on stuff. So that's what we're going to do. But since we have six inches of casters, we're going to take that away. That leaves 30 inches of vertical rise. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut our four by four corner post to 30 inches tall. Uh, in order to give us 30 inches total height, we put the casters on the bottom, give us another six inches, brings us to 36 inches in total height. A about a half an inch more because obviously the tabletop, but uh, to me that's a little better. I like to have things just a little bit higher. Okay, so all four feet are in place. They're more or less straight and we'll straighten out the tops later. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna flip this over so that we can install our casters before we put it in the bottom shelf. So when you're installing these, you wanna make sure you get as far to the edge as you can, but you also want it in the meaty part. See how we're right in the middle of the two by fours and right in the middle of the block. We're gonna use this. This is just a quarter uh, inch lag bolt, one inch in length. Um, again, most of the weight is pushing down, so you just need something that's big enough to secure it. So I've marked our four holes with a marker. We're going to drill them with a slightly larger pilot hole, and then we're going to impact them in with a socket like we normally would. 
there we go all four wheels are mounted now we're going to flip it back over and uh, cut out our bottom shelf next we're going to use this this is just cheap osb i think it's like around a half an inch thick and what we're going to do is we're going to cut three and a half inches back and five inches over which corresponds to five inches in three and a half inches back now you might say okay this is our eight foot mark so how is it going to fit on this well, what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to cut a few more pieces of two by four and basically give it uh, some lips to mount to. I had an old piece of scrap, basically cut down and screwed in. And now I can finish cutting the bottom shelf and install. All right, there we go. The bottom shelf is cut and bolted in, nice and secure. Probably adds a little bit more strength to the whole thing. And so now we get to put on the top piece. Um, so the two long uh, 2x4s are going to go on without a hitch, um, but on one side we're going to install the table saw. One trick to make uh, installing a 2x4 like this a little easier is using a C-clamp right here and a small piece of 2x4 as a spacer to get the height exact, so then you just bolt it on one side, lay the piece down, screw in the other end, and then screw in this end, and that way you're not like trying to get things straight and everything's kind of just falling apart. So here is the table saw we're going to mount in. Um, basically, this is 26 inches wide off the just wide, so it's 13 off the center line, and it's about 20 inches deep. And what we're going to do is we're going to cut this piece out before we lay this whole sheet on top of here, and that will actually give us the base to which we're going to screw this table saw down. Um, and then it's just a matter of, of building some cross braces uh, to give it some rigidity. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna cut this out, um, then we're gonna lay this on top to figure out the rest of our dimension. Let me get you guys caught up. So we've got our top installed. Um, and down here what we did was we made the shelf, um, just ran this across the right height, and then to maximize space, I just used that piece of four by four back there to stabilize it. And now it's flush with the table, screwed in here in the front, and it's a really pretty snug fit back here in the corners. So this isn't gonna move, and so basically when we need it, you know, we can just uh, crank this up, cut what we need to cut, and when we're done, we can just crank this down, and when we're not using it, it is just part of um, the table, just smooth part of the table. It's a little bit higher than the edge of the table, but it's close enough for the kind of work that I do um, that it's not really gonna make much of a difference. The only thing is there's a, um, a ruler that basically bolts down to here um, and that's no longer really uh, feasible to use um, because it's real tight, but we're gonna find a different way to make a, uh, basically a, um, uh, what do they call Like an edge guard or whatever to run a piece of wood that's gonna be a little bit firmer than what we have here, but <clears throat> that's kind of how everything is laid out um, and so the last thing we have to do is seal all of this the next step in our little workbench adventure is to put down uh, three coats of this stuff fast drying uh, polyurethane I chose a clear satin uh, if you want gloss you can do gloss uh, or anything in between it doesn't really matter um, one of the tricks is, I know, I know I live in Texas and everybody that lives up north is like, well, it's not even cold. It's like 38 degrees outside right now, um, which is pretty cold for Texas. And whenever you're putting on something like polyurethane, you really want, or paint, you really want a, uh, like a good average temperature, usually at least in the high 50s, low 60s. Um, so I have this space here going here, um, keeping about 69, 70 degrees here in the garage. Um, and so that's going to allow us to put down like three quick coats. Normally I give it about 20, 25 minutes to flash dry. I put on the next coat. Um, there's going to be a bunch of internet geniuses out there that have different ideas on how to do that. Um, but that's how I do it. And that's how I'm going to do this. This seal the workbench. Uh, mostly this helps uh, for me with caustic stuff. You know, I rebuild a lot of motorcycle engines and spill oil and paint and God knows what else on this stuff. And the, uh, the fast acting polyurethane is the, the same stuff that I covered this with, you know, almost three years ago when I built it. And you can see it's a disgusting mess, but uh, the wood has held up really pretty well. And this one was only, I believe, a half an inch thick. So I'm pretty happy with it. I'm gonna put down a couple more coats real quick. Um, and then I'm gonna show you the goodies uh, I got for this table. 
So, <clears throat> I woke up this morning, put one last final coat on, nice and smooth. And, and the reason you want to do this is other than just sealing it from all kinds of chemicals and stuff, it's plywood, you run your hand across it, you're not going to get any splinters. It's a really nice feeling. So, put in a screw, added our little push bar here. Added this, this is just the standard uh, receiver plate. Um, and what's nice about this is it gives you something to hook on to if you need to and it also gives you, uh, just like on my regular workbench, I can put my vise in here uh, and it'll hold the vise in place and I can work on stuff. Um, as you can see, I put some of my uh, tools under here. I don't know how all this is going to be organized yet, but for now it's just kind of sitting there. And we added this. This is a four foot um, power bar. So that way we have a bunch of power outlets right here on the table. We can just plug stuff in uh, as we need it. And so that's pretty much it for this project as of now. Um, be doing a bunch of housework, uh, painting cabinets, stuff like that. It's nice to have a big open area where you can lay stuff out and paint it. Um, I think eventually I would like to add some sort of chop saw um, thing. Maybe some sort of like dowel pin system where we could basically put in blocks to bring everything to the same level as the chop saw. Maybe add uh, a few more things just kind of as they become necessary. But for now, this is pretty much it. Um, as you can see, 4x8, it takes up a good chunk of my garage. But uh, basically at this point, I'm ready to make this trade off for a larger work surface. So, thanks for watching. You can follow me at Facebook, Snapchat, Instagram, at MaxWorks. Thank you for watching. Make sure you hit the like button, leave me a comment, subscribe to the channel. Peace!